Advanced Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Thursday, 20 of April. Quiet-ish day yesterday. Um, we had some, some movement in Sterling. Let's take a look at this first. Pretty tricky day in cable, right? So inflation came out 10%, bang. Up to uh, up to 68, but even within this this hourly bar, it went up to 50, back down to 05, up to 68, traded to 73. Then you can see back down to 90, and now we're right here in the middle. Oddly, we were at 124, 14 uh, for the announcement, so we're we're right back here. I do think, even though this inflation is terrible for the UK, that they're just going to have to jam rates higher. So, um, owning sterling makes sense here. Um, whether cable's the exact right horse, I'm not sure. Sterling yen's a little extended. Sterling Swiss is a pretty useless pair with no vol. There's sterling yen. Um, thousand points higher um, in the last 30 days already it could easily go up to 169.20 though so I don't know maybe sterling ends your horse we we like cable just because we think the big dollar is going to turn um, yesterday we talked about on Twitter selling between 90 and 20 um, the high was 12 quickly uh, down to 30 so that worked out pretty well for us there um, surprised to see it back at 96 last night in Asia. Really don't understand that. Um, yields have done nothing. I think we're at 359 here, down from 364. Maybe we're just going to fuck around up here. You know, I, I, we really feel like this resistance, this 135.30, is going to really hold it right. And if this thing gets above 135.50, then there's some problems. But now we need a catalyst uh, to send this thing left. Uh, and that catalyst is probably going to have to be risk off, which we haven't gotten yet, right? We had a marginally risk off day yesterday, but um, basically just ended up in indecision and closed up, you know, near the highs, whatever. Um, now we're 10 handles lower, but still, you know, you can see three days in a row it's just closing at 41.70. There's really no directional uh, play here yet. She kind of looks like she wants to go higher still, frankly. Um, we don't have any positions in the S&P. We're, we're, we're just watching. We're kind of befuddled. We're just kind of watching. But she looks like she wants to go higher. So unless this thing turns and starts going negative, um, we really can't stick two feet in the boat uh, with this yen situation so we're we're casually waiting we're trading the ranges Aussie yen we did the same thing yesterday we were long Aussie yen we went got short Aussie yen at 45.50 we bought some Aussie yen at 30 we sold it at 40 we bought it at 30 now we have this tiny bit of Aussie yen left um, and we'll just sort of see what the equity markets doing and it's one of these situations where we're much more comfortable adding through 90 on the downside um, than selling high ones. A couple other things. Euro Norway, stretchy, stretchy. High was 11.61.28. Wow. Just ridiculous. Um, if you want to dig into this, you can, but, you know, the Scandinavians who I talked to are telling me that this is manufactured here based on what the Norges Bank is doing. Um, and so don't fight, don't fight the Fed or don't fight the Norges Bank is what they're all telling me. So I'm just pointing this out. Um, you know, 1162, 11.65 uh, looks a bit stretched. Let's go to oil. Which is finally breaking down through all of these lows. Very choppy trade. We didn't trade it. 
7905, back to 70, back down to 20. Now we're kind of finally through at 78 to 28. Uh, this move in oil is kind of risk off, right? This has this is a recession type move. It also could be positioning, but you know this could be an indicator of lack of demand out there uh, within the oil market. So be careful of that. If you're trading Euro Norway, you want this oil to stabilize uh, before you really get stuck in. What else is out there? Uh, Aussie Kiwi, we haven't traded that in a while, but um, Kiwi got absolutely pummeled. Um, so some of these Kiwi crosses are looking a little bit squirrely. Where's Aussie Kiwi? There she is. We sold uh, some 90s here. Um, we're going to fade this up to the 200 day so we got a couple things happening here we have two and a half sigma uh 108.90 and we have the 200 day uh, which is 109.40 and we also have a, you know it's already getting stretched here it's a big green bar we're already up you know six tenths of a percent which is a pretty big move in aussie kiwi aussie kiwi is is um it's a trendy little beast but she doesn't make these one and a half, two percent moves much. So this looks like a sell between, uh, you know, 109 and 109.40. So this, you know, that's that's almost a half a percent. So pr size it correctly. Uh, and if you're uncomfortable, wait for even a higher one. If you're comfortable and you want to trade around this, you know what you're doing. Um, you can start. You know, I wouldn't hit the 85s here, but maybe look to sell sort of 95s and 05s, whatever, and get yourself an average. Uh, but this thing looks stretched. Let's go to Aussie dollar and see why that hasn't followed Kiwi lower. Um, looks off for Aussie dollar, but it's also like reduced ranges, not doing too much. This thing becomes more interesting if we can pop through 90 on the downside. Um, the 200 day is at 67.40, but as you can see, this does not really, I mean, it can't really close above this 200 day, but it's not really much of an indicator here, even though the last two days have kind of stopped up there. Down below 66.90, then have a look around, see what's going on, and then maybe jump on board um, with the left hand side. Here's Kiwi, uh, much more offered, obviously. This came from 98, now we're at 58. Range lows are not really a threat here, um, but getting through this 200 day. I don't know, I, there must be some news out there. I haven't even looked that closely on why Kiwi's getting smoked, but um, it is kind of in play and, and it is worth keeping an eye on. So. What else? Quick note on crypto. We talked about fading Ethereum last Friday. Um, we did sell some. It was a scratch. Uh, I don't know how I scratched that. Um, we sold 2105s um, <laughs> yesterday, obviously. Yeah, this just got gained. But with the Shanghai fork out of the way and liquidity now in play this is just one of these sort of lifelong buy on dip assets right so 1850 stick your toe out if you don't own any of this um, and then you know keep an eye on your signals however you want to do it this is just accumulate dollar cost average give it to your kids ethereum is that kind of asset Bitcoin, um, as everyone knows, we don't care much about Bitcoin. It's, I mean, we cared a lot about it when it first came out. Um, it was groundbreaking. Now it just sucks up too much energy, and it's just kind of, you know, whatever, gold. Illiquid gold, let's call it. What it is, that's what it is. Um, you know, this thing could go down to 25, 4. But, you know, the proof of work mechanism is annoying for us uh, and very problematic, which is why we think ETH um, will end.
end up being the dominant player in the crypto scene. The other guy we really like is DYDX, which is an all, um, this is an exchange, right? So this is a decentralized exchange. Think about the NASDAQ, but decentralized. Um, pretty volatile DYDX. Uh, be careful with this thing. You can see it goes you know, from 360 down to 180. That's a 50% decline in like two months and then back to 320. Um, but as this thing builds out, um, we see quite a few you know, use cases for, for, for DYDX, uh, especially after the FTX disaster and the whole idea of should an exchange be centralized, should it not be centralized, should it, you know, this is not the moment to be talking about all that. Maybe one day I'll have a little bit, a little bit of a crypto chat for all of you guys who probably don't know anything about crypto. Um, but, um, you know, Matic, Ethereum, DYDX, these are my horses. Um, don't trade Solana anymore after after the disastrous move after FTX and don't own Bitcoin. But I like Bitcoin. I like the concept of Bitcoin. I just don't like the consensus mechanism. Look, I'm babbling on here. Aussie Kiwi left-hand side today uh, watching this equity market. And again, we'll sell high ones in dollar yen. If we see this thing between 135.05 and 25, uh, we'll sell high ones in dollar yen. Good luck out there, people. Talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.